Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Today we are going to do another short, colorful practice together about analogous colors, which are the colors that sit next to each other in the color wheel in the same quarter. If you didn't practice with me last week, I highly encourage you to do so because we practiced already the analogous colors on the cold side of the color wheel. Today we're going to focus on the warm side of the color wheel. So we are talking about yellow, light orange, orange, dark orange and red like, you know, and uh, it's going to be a nice uh, abstract design, uh, organic this time uh, compared to other design that we did with more geometric shapes and lines uh, because I try always to kind of uh, um, mix it up a little bit to make it more engaging. Today I'm, I'm using a small piece of uh, mixed media paper, if you have watercolor paper, if you have Bristol paper, any paper that is a little thick and resistant and I will personally use the brush markers. Now I will list in the description box uh, alternative materials. If you do not have brush markers, you can definitely use a watercolors and use a regular brush, or maybe if you prefer dry media, you can use a pencil. Remember that the focus of the practice is on analogous colors, is on using the right color palette that we are learning about. So it's like uh, the challenge of working on a very small and limited color palette. Now for brush markers you can find them on Amazon, on bleak.com and this one person, the one that I use are Brush Markers Pro by Karin Markers. They have the website and I will uh, write it inside like uh, um, below in my description box. They are expensive because they are more professional. You don't have to stress yourself, mostly if you're a beginner or if you're a parent teaching, you know, some art to your kids because maybe you're homeschooling or you are a student and you're practicing with me because you don't get enough time or exposure to art. Otherwise, you can find scholastic brush markers really, I think, at Target, um, Michaels for sure, Hobby Lobby and check on Amazon and you can type a scholastic brush markers so it will give you different options more um, affordable than the Karine markers that are amazing but they are of course uh, more expensive. So I will switch the camera so we can practice together make sure to read all the materials that are necessary so you can post the video get yourself ready and then we can practice together. Please 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 Remember, and I know that it's uh, sometimes I do the same when I'm, you know, practicing with video from other YouTubers. I forget to subscribe or I forget to like the video, but for me, it's the best and most immediate feedback. So I can understand if I'm doing the right things, if I'm going in the right direction. So, what are the videos that are mostly appreciated by the viewers? What are the videos that are least successful so I can change, I can keep doing practice that you seem to appreciate? And the only way that I can. Uh, have this feedback if you kind of subscribe so you participate in conversation you ask me question and more in most of all if you like the video so please make sure like consider to subscribe to my video to my youtube channel and also like my video so i can kind of you know keep doing what i'm doing or change some practices if i need to do so so let's get ready with our practice and i see you in a second Okay guys, we are all ready. This is my small uh, mixed media paper and uh, my pencil for drawing. And as I told you in the introduction, these are my Karin markers. So we are using analogous colors, which are the colors that sit next to each other in the color wheel. The other practice last week was about the cold side of the color wheel and now we are learning more about the warm side of the color wheel. So we have the yellow, the light orange, the orange and the red. So remember that I also have beautiful practice about the uh, color wheel when we learn about primary, secondary and tertiary. Now, we do a very nice organic and spontaneous design. Uh, the focus, remember, that is on the limitations and the opportunities that a warm, limited color palette is going to give us. So since we are in the fall, I would like to do a sort of like a leaves abstract design when we can use some of the lines that we learn together in my previous practice. So without thinking or stressing too much 
about the design, I will kind of create um, an abstract uh, leaf design. So I'm gonna develop a sort of like a line so that will guide my design. You can do the same. Remember that you can do something different according to your level and your skills. You can do something more complicated. You can do something simpler. As you can see, oopsie, sorry, you cannot really see. Now it's much better. Let's like, uh, there you go, sorry. So as I was saying, um, you can uh, uh, do different things or you can just uh, go like me and set for yourself some lines and then I'm going to build some sort of a, like a leaves. Remember the design doesn't have to take too long, doesn't have to be exactly like mine, and doesn't really have to be the most important things that we're going to do today. Today, in fact, the focus is on analogous colors, which once again are the colors that sit together next to each other in the color wheel. So that is our focus. I'm gonna add something here because I want my design to be pretty full. Now you will notice that working with a very limited palette, so let's say that you have only four colors, is a challenge. And uh, usually we are able to choose among many more colors and a, like a more uh, vast color palette, but Sometimes it's an extremely good exercise for our brain, our imaginations, and most of all, it's important to understand analogous colors. Now, I'm starting to work with my uh, brush markers. Once again, you can use watercolors, you can use another media, or you can provide the brush markers because you can read um, the description in the description box uh, the information about the materials and you can provide yourself you know with the materials and then use them with me so I you see I love the brush markers because basically they have more or less the same effect of watercolors or liquid tempera it's just that the fact that they are markers allow you to control the media a little more so for beginner young student that might be a beautiful materials a beautiful supplies to use to gain control of fine motor skills then you will uh, need for watercolor painting or acrylic painting also they are very clean and easy to store and easy to clean so definitely you know they are a game changer my students are very, very happy when I can afford with the school budget to buy some of the uh, brush markers because they really allow them to be a little more precise, to control a little more what they are doing. And uh, they can also be blended with water and function as watercolors, at least this type. There are other types that instead function as acrylics so they can work on every type of surface, even the dark one. The one that I'm using, the ones that I'm using now, they do not work on black because they are more on water soluble brush markers. So they will function as uh, watercolors or um, tempera, for example. So as you see, instead to switch every time, I kind of use one color at a time and I work with the same color, filling up the surfaces that I want with the same color. After I think I'm done, I put that away and I start with my second color. You do not have to use the colors in the order like, uh, you don't have to use it yellow and then yellow, orange, orange. You can do you. You can switch from yellow to red or yellow to red, orange, as long as you use the analogous, right? As long as, long as you don't include any green, any blue, any purple, violet, or anything that belongs to, to the cold side of the color wheel. And then I do the same very slowly. You just feel the different shapes and the different spaces that you created. And as I told you, I just did a very simple, spontaneous 
organic design using a soft curved lines that we learned about in my previous practice. I always encourage you to go back to some of the practice and if you have been practicing with me each week, remember that you should save all of your project in a portfolio. So if you need, you can always go back and show your kids if you're homeschooling them or show yourself, oh, right, this is the lines this is what we did last time so i'm going to use these as notes basically and i will build on this practice as a teacher i cannot stress enough the importance of building on and like uh, practicing uh, with a you know with structure basically we want to make sure that we do not forget what we learned previously and we actually add on new knowledge and new skill. If you want to put some music while you practice, this is a very, very, very relaxing uh, practice. The only thing that you have to pay attention with these markers, since as I say, they are water soluble, that sometimes they can kind of mess a little bit of paper as you know, it happens to me frequently since I'm a left hand. It's not a problem because you know that you will also paint the background and you can do outlines. And also it doesn't really matter because it is a practice, right? As long as you are understanding what you're doing and understanding why we are using only these few colors instead of the full color wheel means that the practice has been successful for you. After you finish this practice, you can compare with the previous practice that we did together last week and you can actually put together these two designs, one just using analogous colors from the cold side of the color wheel and one using the uh, warm side of the color wheel. Now I think that to make sure that I cover up this uh, little like a, uh, no mistake, but you know, look at my hands, <laughs> typical of left hand, it's okay and it happens. I will use a gray, which is a, um, a neutral color. So it's a neutral color. So it's not on the cold or not on that. This is neutral gray, same type of brush markers. It comes in the, in the same box. But once again, if you do not have um, brush markers, you can use regular markers for this practice. So before I do so, I want to give some black outlines, which I love so much. It's just I love to have my students practicing on outlines is such a good practice because you basically repeat the lines over and over. And you gain more fluency in the lines.
you can always erase the pencil underneath mostly if your lines are not like they are not covering exactly the pencil or you can leave it this way like you can leave the pencil underneath it's really up to you and remember that this is a practice then you can use what you have been learning through my practices and create your beautiful artwork which of course you're gonna kind of do your best you're going to use all of the skills that you have been training you're gonna make sure that your lines your coloring everything look looks very beautiful very precise Now, since I really like pattern, I'm gonna add a little pattern in my leaves. You're free to do the same or not, or even create a different pattern. So remember, you do you. You wanna make your paper reflect your personality and what you wanted to practice today. The only thing that I ask you to do, exactly as I did, is the color palette, because you're learning about a specific uh, element, colors, and a specific uh, way to use that element. The rest, I really like to uh, give freedom to my students to make choices, change, uh, so they feel more engaged because they feel that the project is more like a personal 